Yeah, hello and uh, welcome to our second tutorial video. Um, today we will look into the web app, change some mappings of the sensors and add a third sensor. Um, so the sensors are already ready to connect, so I already crossed the two metal pins on the back side. Um, as already mentioned uh, last time, um, before or when you're powering on the rack, don't move the sensors, otherwise you get wrong calibration values. So let's power on the rack. <coughs> don't move the sensors. <coughs> So you can see the first sensor is connected so on the right side and the uh, second sensor is connected as well. So and now you can move the sensors, they are already calibrated. <coughs> and first let's use the gate, or oh, uh, I forgot to mention, so it's um, we're using the starter kit right now. So we have uh, already a preset here. We have uh, three CVs with the different angels, roll, pitch, and yaw. Then we have uh, three LFOs and uh, two gates per sensor. <coughs> okay, so let's use uh, the gate here based on the pitch axis. So if the sensor is slightly going up uh, on a higher angel here and you go down, here's the gate. So let's connect the trigger input of the plates oscillator by mutual instrument to the gate and the output to our six channel mixer. <coughs> So now let's uh, change some mappings and you can see here's uh, Wi-Fi 2.4 sync and we connect to it <coughs> and now switch the module in, uh, into the configuration mode, the toggle switch to configuration um, because only in configuration mode the web app is active. This is done per design to prevent any interferences during a performance or seminar. Okay, so now open the web browser and you can see it's already open. So that's that's the web app. Um, so on iOS and macOS, you can use a URL name 2-4sync.local. Um, Windows and Android phones doesn't support this, unfortunately, as they don't have uh, Bonjour or ZeroConf uh, network discovery. So for Windows and Android and other operating systems, just put in the default factory IP, which is 192.168.5.1. <coughs> okay, so you can see we hear the two sensors uh, coupled with the device and you can see the mappings here. So let's change the mapping for the gate for B, B8. Now instead of using the pitch axis or uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to trigger um, or to set the trigger based on the position, we are using an acceleration value now. So we are measuring the ac acceleration and at a certain threshold um, a trigger comes up. So here we're using accelerations on the x-axis and we keep the rest for now. i say a few words about more details soon. Okay, so now we don't have the gate anymore based on the pitch, which was before, but now here's the acceleration. And the acceleration x is indicated by the bars on the sensor, so this is acceleration x this is acceleration Y, and this is acceleration Z. <coughs> so I'm going to use the X now. So now, right now, you um, it's not so sensitive already, as you can see, so you need to be a bit stronger acceleration. And to make it more sensitive, let's change the scale factor of the output. So again, switch the module into the configuration mode. So we have a connection to the web app. And now let's change the scale to three, which means uh, which means it's uh, three times more sensitive, um, which, which is uh, basically setting down the, the threshold. 
Okay. So now it's much more sensitive, so I only have to yeah, just a slight acceleration and I already get a trigger out. So this is very suitable for micro movements. Okay, now then let's modulate some parameters uh, of the, with the other sensor. Um, that's, for example, the timbre parameter, which sounds like this. Okay, and we're using a bipolar CV. And again, switch to the module configuration. And we're using A2 now. Set the output mode to bipolar. And uh, yeah, let's say we are using the yaw axis. And we keep the sensitivity so we have a full cycle, 360 degree means uh, full range of the output of CV output voltage. Okay. So we can see the LED right now doesn't show any color because in the yaw axis, the middle position is uh, when the module starts um, or the sensor connects to the, mo uh, to the rack, to the module. At that point, uh, the middle position is indicated by the white bar. So this, and, and as we have a bipolar output mode, this is basically zero volts right now. And if I'm going to the left, the LED goes red which means we have a negative voltage here, so minus, uh, minus 5 volts, and in the other side we get a green color, which means we have a positive voltage. Okay, so this is basically 360 degrees full scale now. Now let's connect the output to the timber parameter, and again trigger the sounds. You can make it also attenuate a little bit less on the plate so we have more changes. All right, so now let's connect a third sensor. So we open our web app and the Bluetooth LE configuration section. And now here's a third sensor across the metal pins. See the LED comes up, and the sensor appears in the in the web app here, and you just add it with a single click, and that's it. Now you can change the input value in, for the different outputs to the new sensor which is connected, and as you can see, it's already blinking, so it's active. And now let's use, yeah, maybe again uh, your access to just modulate the other parameter. Um, so here's the your axis of the new connected sensor. And uh, we keep it uh, unipolar, so from uh, 0 volts to plus 10 volts. Okay. <coughs> and I used A2 for the third sensor. And we connect it to the morph parameter. <coughs> So here's the second sensor, so uh, with the output A2, which is the yaw axis, and here's the third, the third sensor, sorry. It's not so perceivable right now. Maybe we use, uh, yeah, here you can get it. Oh, let's use another parameter so it's better perceivable. here that I'm really just uh, turning the left sensor just a little bit to change the yaw axis so it's very very precise and low latency so it's, you can really make very very small movements and get um, a good perceivable or a very very steady CV voltage out. <coughs> okay so that was our second tutorial. In the next videos, we will show you our new, very cool feature of the upcoming firmware, which supports Ableton Link. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a really, really new, cool feature. Um, it makes a lot of fun. And in the next videos, we will also cover the Bluetooth LE MIDI 
uh, features and the open sound control features uh, to, for example, um, access your U-Rack with Ableton Live and send some MIDI data to your, to your rack. <coughs> All right. <coughs>